Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Shamori TV. We're out and about nice and early this morning. It's nice and fresh. Yesterday afternoon, I got told that a pride of lions had made a warthog kill in front of Sindile Lodge. So I'm heading into that area. We might uh, pick up on some fresh activity. I don't think they would have gone too far. Uh, let's see what we can find. Guys, well, they didn't make that too difficult for us. There's a whole pride of lions lying out in the sun over there on a nice exposed ridge. Uh, I'm just going to head down here through the river. We should be able to get quite nice and close. So we're on a beautiful vantage point over here and all of the lions are lying on the edge of the looking onto that bottom terrace over there. So again, like most predators, they'll just be opportunistic using whatever advantage they have. Uh, in this case, it's elevation, using it as a, a vantage point to just look out over the plains and see what, what's coming along there. There might be a warthog. In this case, this southern pride of lions has been very effective in actually tackling big game, stuff like earlunt and even subadult giraffe. So they'll always be, be on the lookout for an easy opportunity. There's eight sub-adult youngsters and then a few adult females and then this is the one territorial male, the dominant guy. There are a few nomadic lions on the reserve as well. And then there's a northern pride of lions. Obviously lions are very territorial and in this case, kind of a midway barrier on the reserve is their territorial perimeter. So this guy, he will regularly break away from the pride and go and do his territorial markings and patrolling and vocalization, scent marking, scratching, that type of stuff, just to make sure the perimeter is freshly demarcated. And, you know, even the pride to a lesser extent, females will do the, exactly the same in their, in their smaller area. And the northern lions do that as well. And that, that kind of establishes their, uh, their boundaries, prevents them coming into into conflict with one another. So we can see there's about four young sub-adult lions. So when those young males get to about two, two and a half years of age, the territorial male will slowly start pushing them out. And eventually they won't be welcome in the pride and they will, as, as these four youngsters, will stay together and they will form what's known as a coalition. And for the rest of their lives, there will be a dominance hierarchy amongst them in the coalition. but those four lions will then have the ability to hold a much bigger territory which will possibly encompass a number of different female prides in their little territories and they'll be able to hold onto that territory for a much longer period of time than if it's just a single male by himself. If he, if he gets challenged by a coalition of two males or three or four, he won't stand a chance. He'll get pushed out quite quickly. So roaring is instantly available to all other lions immediately. That's one of the benefits of it. The downside of roaring is it only lasts for as long as the noise is being made. It can travel quite far. Now we can even hear a lion calling depending on environmental conditions, wind, uh, air temperature, that type of stuff, about eight, eight kilometers away. But instantly the territorial advertisement for this is my area this is my land i'm here don't bother coming here is is now given out another form of communication that lions use is they will scent mark in other words uh, they will spray urinate against bushes they will rub against bushes with their manes they will scent mark backwards with their feet and scrape uh, even clawing on on branches so there's a, a scent that gets left over there that's unique to this pride a territorial advertisement it's mine uh, the, the, the benefit of that is it can last quite a while. It's sometimes, uh, you know, maybe two weeks before a lion will go back to a point and send mark again. The downside of that, though, is if a lion doesn't walk to that particular tree or within a, 
very certain area around it, that message can be missed. So again, it's looking at the pros and cons of how these guys communicate with one another, the types of messages that they're getting out there, and then what works and what doesn't. There's a lot of tactile communication with lions. Every time lions walk into a pride or they'll stand up amongst themselves and walk towards the next one, when they come into contact with it, the head goes down and there's a, a rubbing. There's a transfer of scent, there's a, a tactile communication there, and there's a, a bond strengthening that gets that gets made then. So lions obviously very social, very tactile. Most of the other cats that we come across are all uh, solitary individuals. So one of the questions we often get is how often do lions hunt? It's very dependent on two things mainly. Is number one how many lions are in the pride and how big the item is that they caught previously. So just in front of Sindile yesterday afternoon I know these lions uh, caught and killed a warthog uh, 40, 50 kilogram warthog isn't going to go particularly far between 11 lions. So it's very much based off of uh, opportunities. You know, even then, lions are successful only about 20% of the time, which means that there's eight failed attempts for every 10 that they try. It's a lot of energy that gets spent on trying to make that kill. So the rest of the time, it's conserving energy, and they do that very well. Well, guys, that was amazing nothing better than sitting with this pride of lions they're all lying out in the open sunning themselves having a good relaxed morning it's been great spending some time with them but uh, let's move off and see what else we can find hello everyone from myself andrew kearney and all the dedicated rangers at shimori private game reserve we just want to say thank you for making our lockdown series such a huge success because of all the phenomenal feedback that we've received, we have officially launched Shimwari TV. We're going to bring you fresh content on a regular basis. And as of next week, you'll be able to find a brand new series directly on Shimwari TV. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for our next episode and I'll see you right here on Shimwari Private Game Reserve.